locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. You ham and egger. Uh, I don't. I know you're not talking to me. That's, I know you're not talking to me. It's you. After the day I've had, it's you. Ham and egger. And and you know what? You a ham and egger is. Yeah, I know what ham and egger is. Ham and eggs is the most simple breakfast around. And okay? you and you're the simplest so, podcast yeah. show in history. But you call somebody a ham and egger. You're calling them a simple you know what? I think it really takes one to know one. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, like uh, Kim Jong Un just called Trump. Crazy and unhinged. It yep. takes one to know one. Oh, that's expert so, uh, right. advice. There. So, when you <laughs> when it that? comes from the mouth of an expert, that's you got to right. take it seriously. That's right. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke, and yes, I do enjoy doing Bobby the Brain Heenan impersonations, like Ham and Egger, so, and so, Humanoid, <laughs> and I'm going to keep on doing them, no matter what my illustrious co-host, the Boston Bad Boy Iron Mike Pelosi. I says. mean, I've heard the term Ham and Egger for a long time. I didn't that's realize that that's 100 that's percent invented yeah. by him. That's, yep, a tri- that's wow. A, okay, that's good to Bobby know. the Brain Heenan. Wow, you know? that's that, that's a that's a com that line goes beyond wrestling. I'm telling you, man. That's like a it leaked into pop culture kind of thing. There's so many things that he did that leaked into pop culture, it's amazing. You know, on this edition of Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, folks, uh, you know we we have a heavy heart here, and and we're gonna try to get through this. Got something special lined up. Talk about Bobby's brain here, you know. But we also have our friend Reed. He's coming back to break down the Triple G Canelo Alvarez match. All that, plus a guy by the name of I Am The Provider. You know, he's some kind of deathmatch specialist. That's the, that's the goofiest name I've heard since the Duke. You well, know what you I mean? That's the goofiest that. fake name well, I've heard. Don't, don't be disrespectful. You can tell him that. You know, But before we get to any of that good stuff there, because we got an action-packed show today, folks. Mm-hmm, Boston mm-hmm. Bad Boy. Yeah. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the, to the news media, because I know you live under a rock. Well... You know? It's very pleasant under here. Yeah, I, it's I was away from say, you. It's away from you. I was going to say, you're sailing the Caribbean like you normally do, but these hurricanes, you know, they, I'm not I'm sure that's not happening. Yeah, well, yeah. don't worry about me. You know, worry about yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> worry about your own home. Keep your own house in order. Give me a break. But listen, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, mm-hmm. this has been a bad week to be a co- co-star mm-hmm. in a movie of his. Really? I'm telling you, a couple guys, are, they got some problems. Big problems. Explain. I haven't been following this. Well, first, because Dwayne Johnson will always be the Rock. He's the Rock, and when now yeah. he insists on being called Dwayne Johnson and things, you don't want to call him. It's that. gone. And you know what? I, I was somewhere, and they was playing that stupid song from Moana that he sings, sure. and he can't sing. Sure. You know, he does a lot of things really well. He do, he does a great voice. He's good as the character. Are you kidding His me? His right singing now? was it's just awful. And when I'm you pretty see sure it, he won an and Oscar. When, for and when that. you hear, <laughs> he did not win an and Oscar. It was a platinum selling album. Not, he I swear to you. He, all right, he did not. I don't think he won musical, an Oscar. Best musical, animated uh, music. He didn't I'm win an Oscar. You. you know who did win an Oscar? Multiple Oscars. Denzel Washington, who I saw today. That's right. I did. was driving by, and they're filming a movie just outside of Boston, mm-hmm. and I was going uh, on my way to an appointment, and they had the whole film crew, and I'm like, what is going on here? I look over, and there he is, Denzel Washington. Steps away from me. See Two-time that? Oscar winner. See that? You know, a brush with greatness, and then I have to come and sit and stare at you. Listen, from one great to another. Look oh, at please. That. You know what I mean? You haven't you haven't won a daytime Emmy Award. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> two Oscars. Listen, I, I win awards in the hearts of all of our fantastic <laughs> listeners. That's what matters. Yeah, you're assuming they have hearts. Yeah. But getting back to the, to the rock. Yeah. Go ahead. So, a guy by the name of Tyrese. Okay. He, he's a also an actor. Former Fast model. Fast and Furious. Singer. He's an he's actor. Exactly. He's part of the Fast and Furious uh, movie franchise. Sorry, sorry to hear it, by the way. Yeah. Well, he takes to social media and calls out The Rock, Ooh. who's also part of the Fast and Furious yeah, yeah, yeah. franchise. It's probably, and, and, I, and I would say The Rock has lent a new energy to it. Absolutely. Be, they, I don't think it would exist if it was just Vin Diesel. Well, it was always a, a strong franchise anyway, but The Rock kicked it up another notch there. You know, shout it's out just the right vehicle for Bingo. him, if, Bingo. if I may be so bold. So Tyrese is upset because Why? The Rock, allegedly, has chosen to film another project mm-hmm. coming up, okay. like within the next couple of months here. And Tyrese feels that The Rock should shelve his project mm-hmm. and do the next Fast and Furious first. Because Tyrese needs a paycheck? Because is Tyrese, that- and I quote, because our kids need to eat. <laughs> so it's on the rock to feed your kids. 
Well, you know, right? I will say the Rock fed the McMahon family for a long time. Oh, give me a. He, so he, he thinks he, he, Tyrese right. is Vince McMahon now. Well, you know what? Maybe maybe Vince called him and said, "You know what you should do? Yeah, you should just you should just you should just hammer on the Rock <laughs> and make him feed your family like he did for me for so many well, years." Well, this is the thing. You, you should hear this guy. Call me, bro. I'm, I'm, it's all love. Call me. It's so all then, love until gets, the Rock knocks on your door at ten thirty one night. I know. Well, it gets worse. He says, "The Rock, you sent me an email." Yeah. I don't do email. Oh, call me, bro. He doesn't do email. Let me tell you he something. Doesn't do Let me tell you something, Tyrese. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Muscled up. Oh boy. Singing self. Let me tell you something, Tyrese. <laughs> I don't like your attitude, and I'll tell you why. You need to speak to the Rock personally, and if he's not answering your calls, then stop calling. And you need to give him okay? a little respect. That's it. That's it. Know your role and shut your mouth <laughs> and smell what The Rock is cooking. Okay? Well, here's the thing. The best part about it is The Rock, there's a guy you look at him, he's just zen. Absolutely. He doesn't care anymore. 100%. So that, but that's the scary guy. Yep. Because when he does turn, I know, it's going. Tyrese's he head will come attached yeah, from his Ty body. Tyrese, he ought to be ashamed of himself doing this. And who is Tyrese? He's riding on this guy's coattails. That's the he's worst part. He's riding on Vin Diesel's coattails. That's Imagine the worst it. part. What is your life like if you're riding on Vin Diesel's coattails? Well, Vin, Vin Diesel is a big, a big time Hollywood. He's an A-lister. He's also like five foot two. He's also the main producer of the Fast and Furious franchise. So he's made a ton of money off of that. I, I respect Vin Diesel. Why? He's as tall as I am. I respect him <laughs> to the moon. Yeah, well, okay? you, you, know, you, you try to go around acting like a tough guy. Actually, so well, there are a lot of commonalities between you. You're both not tough guys. Uh, you're both are follically challenged. Uh, you're both uh, <laughs> five foot two. <laughs> Listen, you, you know, you I, are you Vin Diesel? I am Vin Diesel. <laughs> I am, and that's why that's why Tyrese has to beg the Rock to come on our movie because you well, know, wasn't there some feud Tyrese between be Vin Diesel and the Rock? Oh, allegedly, but who knows? It could have been it, it could have been Tyrese. No, they I, said somebody on the on in the movie. I as, I assume when I hear this stuff because of the phony baloney thing between him and Vin Diesel, it's all ro the Rock is bringing an element of kayfabe into this whole I movie business. I don't think not and, even because it, it generates. We're talking about it. It generates interest in Doesn't Fast and Furious make, 400. Let me tell you something. The Rock is the biggest movie star on the planet, and he's also the biggest wrestler on the planet. You know who the biggest I'm, movie star on the planet? Who? My new friend, Denzel Washington, who I saw today. Denzel Washington hasn't made as much money as The Rock in the Denzel past Denzel Washington is a three respected years. Yeah, I love actor. Denzel. I he love is Denzel. A, he is a Hollywood elite. He's A-list. Sure. You think The Rock is A-list? Are you kidding me? I guess he's A-list. He's the number one action star in the world. I know, but A-list means something. Like Meryl Streep's A-list. The Rock a. is A-list. All right. When you put The Rock in your project, you are going to have if a guaranteed the Rock, hit. If The Rock, and I remember like Jim Carrey, a sure. comedian, yep. does a turn in the drama, does pretty good at it. Yep. I, I think The Rock could do it with a little work. He's, please, he, he could do anything. He's The then Rock. Then why doesn't he? He does. You should watch his show on HBO, Ballers. It's unbelievable. I don't do it with HBO. It's, it's a great I'm not paying But anyway, HBO. Tyrese, cut the crap. But it gets better. <laughs> Another one of The Rock's good friends mm -hmm. and uh, co-stars mm -hmm. in movies, Kevin Hart. <laughs> he is not having a good week. Speaking of short fellows. He is, yeah. Another, another one of my <laughs> short brothers out there. I'm telling you. We, we're a whole crew. Short. He's not having a good week. Yeah, what happened? He puts out a video mm -hmm. saying... And he accuses a lady of allegedly trying to extort him, saying oh, that she has. Oh, is there a whole affair thing going on? He has right? a whole alleged affair thing right. going on. So and, and she this said lady, something to his wife. And, you know, and, and here's the worst part. So the young lady that he's talking about, she's a local girl. She's from Revere, Massachusetts. Really? She's out on the West Coast nowadays, but she's from around. Does she here. have the Revere hair, really uh, high I'm hair. Sure, like yeah, all the well, you know how it is. And <laughs> when you hear her talk, you can hear Revere yeah. coming out. I'm, I'm sure. Hey, who knows? She could be a nice young lady. Who knows, whatever. I got no business with Kevin Hart and whoever he is or isn't messing around with. But here's the point. He puts out the video. That saying, was sent to him? Or he does his own video? He does his own video. Yeah. Saying he's trying to get ahead of it. Because he <laughs> will not be extorted. And he and people need to understand that there's a big target on his back now. So he needs to make better decisions. First of all, didn't he do a bit about this? Isn't Doesn't he do a bit about... Be uh, having an affair. Like he didn't he famously have an affair before. Well, here's the well, here's the thing. The the woman who's his wife today. Yeah, his wife before her alleges that Kevin they were cheated on right, her. That's right. So with the woman who's his wife now. So this is a thing. And didn't didn't Dave Chappelle get a, try to get extorted for someone saying he was having an affair or something? Know. He had to settle with something know. out of court. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what people Dave going Chappelle. after. Do you, people go after. I think people comedians are like carnival folk they go from town to town sure and they meet a lot of different people sure and i'm sure some of them dabble some don't sure but uh if you have to get out ahead of something 
Yeah. I don't know. I've never news. had to get out ahead of something. Have you? No. I've never had to get out ahead of something. I don't to do that stuff. But here's, here's the point. What is the common thing here? Yeah. The Rock. <laughs> so if you if you have ever been in a movie with him, yeah. just know you're having a, a pretty bad week. You're probably having a bad year at this point. So you're saying the rock is a cursed. Uh, if you're you, there's a rock curse. There's a rock curse. His fickle finger touches yep. you, and then that's it. There's nothing. You're done. You're done. You're gonna have a bad week. Yeah, but didn't he do? <sighs> what? No, and it's not him because he always has a good week. Well, that guy. That's the best. That's part. the well. That's maybe he's sucking all the goodness out when that's you're around it. him. That's it. All, everyone's aura and luck goes to the rock because he's happily married. He's got the kids. He's got that little tiny dog. Successful. He walks on the beach. Movie company. He has his own production company. Well, yeah, he did that big thing on CNN. He did a documentary. Yeah. yeah. And we had to make sure we referred to him as Dwayne Johnson. That's right. That's as right. if anyone's going to know. Who Are that you going to tell him what to call him? He'll, he'll if he tells you to call him the greatest of all time, you just do it. Well, that's because you're matter. afraid of everybody, and oh, you would, it wouldn't matter to you. His his arm is bigger than my entire body, <laughs> but that's not the point. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, Dwayne Rock Johnson. So I shouldn't I, I shouldn't no, be in a do movie. Do not go in any movies with him anytime soon. Boy, I should until this thing passes. I should have told Denzel when I saw him today. See? I should have told him. I should have said, you know, stay out of this guy's. That's way. right. That's don't a good do point. any projects yeah. with the Rock. No, because it, it just is bad. I news wish right you told now. me this the other day. See, you know, and uh, you know, I know the Rock is local as well. Because his lady's from Massachusetts. Oh, that's right. Please don't beat me up for bringing this up. I'm just delivering the news. That's it. Wow. See that? That's. Uh, I would like to see The Rock beat you up in a very public exhibition somewhere like the Boston Common, maybe, or Revere something. Beach. Would be I'll, nice. A little I'll, summer exhibition. I'll tell you one of my favorite memories of The Rock. <clears throat> and this is when he was just becoming sure. The Rock, right? So Fanny, really pa hot. Fanny yeah. Pack era? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fanny <laughs> Pack era. He runs into the ring. The Undertaker and Kane have become a tag team. The okay. Brothers of Destruction. Sure, right? sure. That sounds familiar. So The Rock goes into the ring because they had just done something that he didn't like. And those guys are even bigger than he is. Yeah, they're big guys. Big guys. Big, almost seven foot tall guys. So he, he starts yelling at one, yep. and he starts yelling at the other, and then he's looking at them and he realizes that, wait a second, I just got in the ring with these two big guys. So he says, forget it. He was holding a, a uh, towel in his hand. Throws a towel at one, punches the other, then punches the other, and just starts to go. He knows he's going to get beat up. Yeah. But it's like, forget it. I but might as well get my shots in. in. Yeah. If The Rock ever approached me You'd and wanted to first, rip my head off. You say you're going to try and punch him first? I'm going to yell at him as loud as I can because that's what you do when startle someone's him. bigger than you. Startle him. Try to startle him. Yeah. And then while he's startled, I'm going to give him my best shot. Now, if there is any chance in the world that you could startle The Rock. Yep. Yeah. Boy, I, I might as well play the lottery because <laughs> you. There's nothing about you that is startling in any sense of the Listen, word. So he, I just I he just hope down. you don't run into the rock. He would back down. Yeah, I don't think okay. so. Okay. Now normally this is where you run the ropes, but Boston Bad Boy. Yeah. There is only one story in the world of professional wrestling left to talk about. Absolutely. This week? Are you kidding me? And that is the passing. Of the greatest manager, the greatest commentator, probably the greatest talent in the history of professional wrestling, Mr. Bobby the Brain Eating. It's amazing how much has gone out in social media. You have a lot of people you're connected to in wrestling. I don't. I'm connected through you. But right. even people who aren't, I've seen sharing uh, videos and quotes and uh, pictures and memes. And it's amazing that even the most casual wrestling fan... Uh, knows this guy uh, and, and appreciated his work. Well, you know, Bobby the Brain Heenan is really part of our childhood. If you were alive in the late 70s, early 80s, going through the 90s, mm -hmm. you grew up on Bobby the Brain Heenan. Sure. Just like Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan right. and the Macho Man, when you think about all these larger-than-life figures in the pro Mount wrestling. The Mount Rushmore, perhaps. The Mount Rushmore. Andre the Gi He was Andre the Giant's manager. Right. Um, you don't get much more classic than that. Exactly. But when he transitioned from being a manager to being a commentator it was his voice that you heard throughout the match right right you know so it's funny when we talk about the way that we do this show um you're the bobby the brain heenan of the show boston bad boy obviously you know you're, you're the great ridiculous... mind great minds yeah. think alike okay you're great the over the top minds think alike you stick up for the wrong things are you kidding me you know what right, you're a right. weasel Wow. Okay, you, all of that. That's what they call him, the God. weasel. And I am the gorilla monsoon <laughs> slash Vince McMahon of you, the show. You, 
the, okay. See, this is I'm it. the guy that you're, keeps it together. You're crazy. Yep, you that, really think what it you is? really think this. Give and me a break. it just is that I'm smarter and funnier than you. Oh, please. And I keep the show rolling. Yeah. Okay. So like Bobby you the sound Brain. Just like Bobby. Like Bobby the Brain here, yeah. who kept the WWE moving oh, okay. and kept it funny and kept it uh smart and intelligent and was on the side of right mm. and the side of realism. Uh, I do the same for this show. So uh, I am honored that you think that uh, we have any similarity uh, similarity at all. And uh, it's a shame that we lost another a, a genius in this world. It's true. Thank God. The brain. Thank God you still have me, though. Oh, is that so what it is? The spirit gonna... of Bobby the Brain Heenan is, is inside If of I'm you. lucky, I, yes. And yeah. if you're lucky, that's the truth. Because well, otherwise, you're in big trouble. I'm going to get you a weasel suit so we can, we can see how you... They don't make those. That's not a real thing. <laughs> it's not a real thing. But what well, is a real thing, we got a bunch of uh, calls from listeners and fans oh. uh, who wanted to express some thoughts about uh, Bobby. And uh, so we put them together a little bit, so I think we should play them. So, let's uh, see what some of our listeners had to say about someone who really uh, made an impact on them as fans. What's going on, everybody out there in the Duke Loves Wrestling community? I'm Old Man Wade, host of the Old Man Wade podcast. I wanted to say a few words about the late, great Bobby the Brain Heenan and what he meant to me. For me, he was one of the greatest heels to ever grace wrestling. Not just a manager, one of the greatest heels to ever grace wrestling. I remember the first time I saw him on Saturday morning superstars, the chant, the crowd was just chanting, weasel, weasel, weasel. And he's got two fingers in the air like he's controlling an orchestra. And I couldn't help but smile. I knew that I wasn't supposed to like this guy. I knew that he was a bad guy, but he was just that good. You couldn't help but like everything that he was. Hi, this is Opal from Boston. I want to send my condolences to the Bobby Heenan's family. Used to love watching uh wrestling with my family loved his charisma his laughter his his great um sassiness in interviews he definitely made my childhood fun yo what's up duke this is jb just want to say my condolences to old bobby heenan he's one of the greatest commentators of all time if not the greatest him and uh his work with gorilla monsoon was just classic you know two going back and forth it just Timeless, man. You can just listen there for hours, man. They just fed off each other with just, uh, just art. Just looking at art right there, man. Prayers to his family. I know it's a sad situation and all that, man. Just hope they, hope they get through it. But uh, just say my words. Bye, bye, Mahina. Thanks. Hi, everybody. It's the Pavarotti of Hard Shots to the Body. This is Big Vito LaGrasso doing a tribute to Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan was very instrumental in my championship days and even when I was a rookie back in the WWF in 1991. I totally have to say he definitely was a mentor, a big influence on my wrestling career, and somebody that I admired growing up and watching on TV. I'm going to miss you, Bobby. I hope you're at peace now and you feel better. This is Big Vito LaGrasso, the Pavarotti of Hard Shots to the Body, saying goodbye, Bobby, rest in peace. I love you and I miss you. Take care. That's just a, a slice of how impactful Bobby Heenan was on the lives of, you know, podcasters, writers, fans, and, and other even pro wrestlers. wrestlers yeah. yeah. You know, I so mean, just... think of how many guys, he was involved so long in the oh business. Oh, my goodness. So all these, from, from the Andre the Giant days and Hogan, all the way up to fairly recently. And he was a wrestler his own self. So right. he goes way back to the AWA. Right. Then he went to the WWF at the time. He ended his career in the WCW. Oh, so he right. continued going. He went right through. So yeah. when Vito talks about the fact that he wrestled in, in 91 for the WWF, Bobby was there. Right. But when Vito had a success in WCW, he was there again. Bobby was there again. Isn't that amazing. Calling his matches and everything. Well, so that, that just, again, speaks to the small world that it is. It and, is. And everybody, you know, you get to have this brush with greatness. These yeah. guys are still working and, you know, so, yeah, I mean, great to have those memories and obviously meant a lot to a lot of people. It does. It does. And, you know, on behalf of, uh, you know, the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast and all of our great listeners and, and wrestling crew, as we like to call our listeners, just want to say to uh, Bobby Heenan and his family that we miss you and rest in peace. And uh, this show dedicated in Bobby's memory. Folks, up next, we have him, a man by the name of I Am The Provider. This is Dusty Wilson, and I invite all you wrestling fans to join me over here on Duke Loves Wrestling. Duke 
Wrestling Podcast. Greetings and salutations from the Omniverse. I am the Duke of Duality. I am the Prince of Polarity. I am the Transcendent Time Traveler, hailing from a parallel timeline, existing in Denver, Colorado, the home of Primo's Pro Wrestling and the 8th Annual Slave to the Deathmatch Tournament coming to you live this Sunday. All you got to do is obey, join, transcend, take my hand, take the placebo. What do you say, Duke? The cult awaits you. Well, Duke, I promise I didn't take magic mushrooms before this interview. I feel like I have. Jesus, <laughs> what is going on? I'm, I am the provider. Uh, welcome to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Let me just get this out of the way. You are, are frankly, one of the strangest and most sickest wrestlers I, I've ever come across uh, in my lifetime. What is your deal? You see, our whole planet, this whole timeline, has underwent a change of vibration, and I'm just ahead of the curve. You're not quite up to my way of thinking, my way of understanding. It's called enlightenment. But I'm here to spread the word and spread the wisdom. No worries. I'll, I'll get you up to base really soon. Boy, Boston Bad Boy, come on. Stop stop with the I, whole you're about I, to fall out I, of your I, chair. There. You're under a spell. I mean, I'm either, yeah, I'm either I'm falling under the spell or the air is very thin in Denver, Colorado. That's, I can't decide which way. might be a combination way. of both. <laughs> what, what, what is this that uh, Primos has the 8th annual uh, Slave to the Death Match Tournament? What, what is this all about here? 8th annual Slave to the Death Match Tournament. Uh, let me just um, start with letting you know a few of the stars that have graced our presence at Slave to the Deathmatch Tournament. We've had stars such as Mick Foley. We had uh, Harry Smith. We've had Sabu, Tommy Dreamer, Rikishi Hernandez, Steve Carino. And that's just to name a few. Our winners have been uh, Madman Pondo, Necro Butcher, Mosh Pit Mike, Chewy Martinez, and my former self, Joey Terrifying, won the fifth annual. Your former self? What, what does that even mean? What do you, what do you, what? You, you, you got multiple personalities going on there? <laughs> no, I, I, I've transcended. I tried to explain that to you as the vibrations changed. So did mine. I transcended and became a super being. I became, I am the provider, a better version of myself. Now, Colorado was one of the first states to legalize marijuana, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm starting to think that maybe uh, they've unleashed something here. I think they've unleashed maybe a wave of energy that's it's pouring out into the country from Colorado. The truth is all I ever offered is placebo. Placebo is the anti-drug. There's ah. no drug involved. Every power that you gain from any substance that you eat, that you ingest, coffee, whatever it is, you gain that power strictly from your mind, not from any mm. substance. Wow. I mean, that's provided you have a mind to begin with. Unlike, you know, Duke, sometimes I wonder if he has anything going on up there. So he well, might need a little extra jolt of whatever the placebo well, is. This, this mind over here is one of the sick and twisted minds that you'll ever come across. This mind birthed, slave to the death match, one of the most brutal tournaments you'll ever see, inspired by Japanese death match, such as Yokohama Dream inspired by members like Mick Foley, who had nothing but beautiful things to say about it. He, uh, he told me that I need to go ahead and capitalize on our format because our format is often imitated and very sought by all the other deathmatch tournaments. So the way we started is 16 men joined. They're all selected. This is an invitational tournament. The best deathmatch wrestlers from around the world We've had wrestlers from from Japan, wrestlers from Mexico, Canada, all around the United States. Sixteen men, eight teams. They all square off in a tag team match. All every single match at Slave to the Death Match has an individual death match stipulation. So they face each other. They face each other in the first tag team match in the first round. The winners advance and face each other in a singles match in the second round. The winners of that advance into a four-way dance, every single match having more and more brutal stipulations. So, and it's basically a King of the Ring style, but even better because 
in King of the Ring, they're all singles matches. But in this, you have to be victorious in a tag team match, a singles match, and a four-way dance, wow. and all with the most brutal stipulations that you can ever imagine. You know, it's like almost like you're speaking a different language, because as Duke knows, I, I, I hate wrestling. So ex- what makes this a death match, though? Why are we, why, what's this what does tag? Death match what, mean? what does death match mean in general? And what does it mean for what you guys are doing? Many people will confuse hardcore with death match, and it's not the same. Hardcore match would be a tables match, uh, chairs, maybe even a TLC a uh, death match would be you set that table on fire or you <laughs> put you put glass on top of it oh. or you have or you have 100,000 thumbtacks in there Sick. or maybe we'll take it maybe we take it old school with a taipei death match or maybe we'll just throw some light tubes taipei in there we have fire glass electrified light Sickness. tubes <laughs> all of the most creative stipulations but, that you could ever. Let, let me tell you something. I am the provider. Let me tell you something. I am the provider. Everything that you're talking about right now is just sick, <laughs> and and it has no place in in the, in the sport of professional wrestling. Oh, get the hell out I of here! I want you to tell me right now. Why do you sit there and pervert professional wrestling by trying to attach that name to whatever this nonsense you're talking about? Thumbtacks and Taipei and all kinds of craziness. What are you guys doing? That, that's not wrestling. I understand what I understand that you would have such a a closed-minded ver- version of uh, view on wrestling, but the fact of the death match wrestling is just as much a genre, a version of wrestling as lucha libre, as women's wrestling, as midget wrestling, as anything. It's all a part. Whether it's your cup or tea or not, that's fine. But it is an entity of wrestling, and many of the best names have furthered their career by doing it and got back on the main stage by doing it. Mick Foley, Terry Funk, so many more. The, the, the list goes on and on. If you really do your homework, deathmatch wrestling is respected by the old school. Oh, you should know that. Give me yeah, you should that. know this, Duke. No, I don't believe Don't this. worry about Listen. it, you know, because provider Duke doesn't really know as much as he likes to say. No. And he, he's afraid. He gets other people to fight his battle, so he would never last one second. In a in a in a hardcore match, well, I'm not death crazy match like about that. doing any kind of death match. Let me let me ask you this: What about safety? You got all these people bleeding, open wounds all over the place. What kind of safety measures are in something like this? Because I'm telling you right now, I don't think that what you're doing is safe at all. It varies from state to state what all the regulations are and all that, and and every wrestler has they they all are willing to do it. I've never asked anybody to do it. These are all people that are willing death match wrestlers. Of course, there's going to be just like any, an MMA fight, any any anything like that, boxing. It's all going to be it's all going to be a risk. And you're correct about that. But that same exact thing can happen in a regular match, and you know that you've seen it happen time and time again. Now you have promotions like the WWE, which is the big dog, the granddaddy of them all, and, and the entire sport of pro wrestling. They've made it very clear. My friend Vince McMahon, oh, my friend, oh, has made it very clear that he markets towards kids. Okay, that's the target yeah, audience. Because all he cares about is after. money. He doesn't well, care about the sport. He cares about money. I, and, and these guys are going out there busting their no, heads open quite literally these guys to promote the sport. Never mind Vince McMahon. Don't listen but to him. Provider. Who are you marketing this death match <laughs> nonsense to? Real okay? fans. That's who. Who are you marketing this to? I hope you're not marketing the kids. Who are you marketing this stuff First to? First and foremost, let me. Let me get this out of the way so I don't don't leave it in the past here. But uh, it it off, looked an awfully lot like uh, Vince McMahon had a nice little blade job on what was it Raw a couple of uh, maybe a week ago or so. So um, yeah, over in there in the WWE they have uh, anti you know anti color pro you know uh, from what I understand that's what that's what their standard is over there. They have the doctors that are all over the workers to make sure that nothing like that is going on. That's what they're doing with that, but it's kind of funny how Vince is above the law, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know for sure, but that, that's definitely been passed around that that was new skin and it was clean, you know, and it was backstage, and then they cleaned it up. I, I don't know for a fact that it is, but we'll move on to, to your question now. Now shoot your question at me again. Well, my question to you is, who are you marketing this stuff to? Are, are you marketing okay, this to kids? My, my show is an all ages show. But it is with a strong parental advisory. Usually we don't get anybody under 16 or so. Mm-hmm. If they do, they get a very strong warning at the door that what's going to happen. I don't like and this. And basically this is, an, this is an 18 and up show, basically. 
You're they afraid. Believe. Duke is afraid. Here, and, here's, like and here's the thing. If we're going to talk about Vince McMahon. Well, I will, I will, they will strongly warn any kids that come to the door. It's fine. Right as they come. Yeah. Right as they come yeah. for this show. And this is only one show a year. It is what it is. I have fans that don't come to my wrestling show all year, and then they only come to this. And I have fans that come all year and do not come to this. What you know? This so is it, it, it's a different market, and it and the crowd is is often triple the size. It's it's amazing. You know, we we just talked about Vince McMahon that he is so uh, up in arms about not showing blood and everything has to be, but he doesn't care about giving people crippling lifelong concussions. That's oh, not a real goodness. thing. All right, that's not All a real right. thing that wrestlers endure. But having Stop them bleed, it. oh, we can't have them bleed Stop on TV. Right that might scare a little kid. Don't talk about shouldn't, my friend. Shouldn't multiple concussions and people who, when they do this job for a living and they do get it, you got to recognize that. No, can't we recognize I'm not that? Recognizing that? I'd rather take a little blood and a recognition that that can happen than pretending everything's fine and not showing blood on TV. Break. But you know what? Look, I'm not even going to go there right now. What? Let me ask you something. I am the provider because you're talking about some really crazy stuff. If somebody wants to break into the wrestling business and specifically they want to become a king of the death match, what sort of advice do you give them? Is there a place where they can train for death matches? What, what, what do they do? I tell them learn how to be a wrestler first. See that? You, that that's imperative. You. You don't belong. You don't. You don't belong in a death match. You, you, if you can't protect yourself in a regular match, then you then you ha you have no no business in a death match. And uh, the, to me, death match is an art. And and when you come when you simulate violence, you come very very close to the real thing. Uh, death match isn't made to to kill each other. There's the garbage death match wrestling, and then there's death match wrestlers that are artists that are skilled. That, that that travel the world and do this. If they were like dying, like everybody thinks they are, then they wouldn't be able to make these next dates. They wouldn't be able to travel. So um, it's a lot more of a sport and um, athleticism and an art than you than you are understanding. And if and when you could understand that there are skilled guys in in the genre, and some of the some of the top guys there have done done it. You know, as far as Dean Ambrose. As far as uh, there's other guys that have, uh, you know, Ruby Riot on NXT. That there's a, a lot of the top, the top wrestlers up top have have experience in it. So, for someone to uh, just knock it for just elementary reasons, I think they just aren't really understanding or not doing their homework. You know, there's a lot of uh, people, we, we've talked to a lot of people, a lot of trainers, and, and a lot of people are getting into wrestling as their career, younger people, uh, and they're sort of jumping the gun. They're getting ahead of themselves, even in wrestling. Do you guys, in your particular area, see people who are trying to jump the line, so to speak? They don't have the experience, and they're trying to do the advanced stuff, and they're getting hurt, and it's sort of, maybe that's sort of throwing off the perception of, of how safe this is and wh how valid it is as, a, as, a, as part of the sport? Um, honestly, um, I haven't really heard any real horror stories of like inexperienced death match guys getting in there. Like more often, you hear stuff like the recent one. I'm thinking like Oklahoma, where just like yarders are dropping each other on their head and stuff like that. And to me, it, that that it goes back to the, the previous question. If you want to be a death match wrestler, like to me, I'm not even going to consider you until right. you're. A trained wrestler, and I would think so. it's a it's a tighter knit community. Even then, you know that subgroup within the group of wrestlers, you guys who all work at that level, you know everyone really knows each other, and and you can't sort of s slide in and and, and fake it uh, when you're working at that level. Yeah, exactly. You can't fake the funk when you're dealing with uh, with uh, what, what we you would call props right. that have such level of of um, danger. Right, like you literally have to be an expert to to just survive some of this stuff. And uh, and like the fact is that um, there is a skill to it, even when like you would think uh, you know someone that is like to me like a lot of deathmatch wrestlers will get the the rep of like it's somebody that couldn't like hack it as a wrestler, so that's why they do that. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there's that example. There's probably hundreds of that example, but to me like that, that's not the way to do it. That's just going to be a garbage style. Sure. It's just they're not going to be. They're not going to be able to walk out of there. They're going to be taking a bunch of trips to the ER. They're going to be doing, uh, you know, or worse, you know. So uh, to me, it's just uh, it's, there's, it's a level of skill that you need to attain, and if you, and you you shouldn't even be even thinking of a death match until you are a trained wrestler. I mean, uh, like a veteran, in my opinion. If fans want to get in touch with uh, Primos Pro Wrestling, especially if they want to come out and, and see 
this eighth anniversary tournament here? What's the best way they, they can uh, get all the details? Uh, we got uh, primosprowrestling.com. Pretty simple. Um, they can look up some of our past shows. There's a lot of cool interactive stuff on there. They can get tickets there. Um, we can we can sell a few DVDs and such like that right through there. Also, on top of that, um, it is the 8th Annual Slave to the Death Match Tournament. It, the same exact show is also Primo's Pro Wrestling's 10th anniversary, so that's a decade of pro wrestling in Denver, Colorado. And I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> wow, listen to this guy. He's very tickled by the well, fact that for 10 years they've been busting each other right. up all over the place. Well, they must know what they're doing. They wouldn't yeah. be, there wouldn't be anybody left walking around if they didn't know what they were doing. About that. Let me tell you something. I am the Dude, provider. What, listen. Listen, dude, once a year, there's a death match tournament. The other 12 shows out of the year, once a month, I give a family-friendly show. Listen, and I, and I've I spoken to Captain drop. Stevens, I and I know for a fact that you guys have busted him open at that place. Yeah, because he's and, a captain he's a who's nice not anywhere guy. near the ocean. Was, captain Stevens is a nice hey, listen, guy. Listen, if he was a captain, first of all, he'd get near the ocean. Maybe they're doing him a favor, no, busting him up. I don't and like secondly, it. provider, is there any way I can sign Duke up for one of these no, death matches? No, do not death, sign death me. Matches. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Do, like what? Like I said, I never ever ask somebody to do it. it it's <laughs> always a willing participant. Uh, it, even if Duke doesn't like me, like I wouldn't even wish that on him. <laughs> see that? But I would. So is that's it, the difference. See, you're a nicer guy I'm than I am, and I'm going to sign him up. Stop and Duke, you're going out there. It's going to be great. I We're going to film it. It'll be awesome. His name is I am the provider. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great evening. Enlighten yourself. What a bizarre character he is, huh? Boy, um, I'm trying to get enlightened. Um, is that what it is? That's exactly what I'm trying I don't, to do. I don't like some of the things he says about this deathmatch stuff. I, well, I, I wanted to ask you, know. what is what exactly is the Taipei deathmatch? Because he mentioned that as a specific kind of... You you know what they do. If I'm not mistaken, they um, dip their hands oh. in glue. And then, <laughs> and then and the they glass, right, or whatever. Dip it in glass. And it's then, like in Hot Shots when he dips it in sure. hot chocolate and then he puts it in. Well, like, they were making fun of um, right. Bloodsport. <laughs> That's exactly right. Jean Claude so there you Van go. Damme. Right, right. Yeah. And the only thing I ever learned from Bloodsport was you got to th throw the sand in the guy's eyes. That's if right. You have an opportunity to do cheat. that. Cheat to win. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Winning's winning. Yeah. Bobby the Brain Heenan again. Winning is guy. winning. Yeah. Jeez. So uh, yeah. Speaking of winning. I see that you brought a little uh, snack here. Oh, What's no, this? these aren't for you. These oh, aren't really? for you. you know, this is a jar of stuffed peppers okay. in oil uh, from Roy's Cold Cuts in East Boston, Massachusetts. They look now, delicious. Roy's has been around since like 1960. My grandmother went to Roy's. I grew up eating Roy's. And today is Roy's birthday. Oh. Roy turns the big 6-0 today. He, he runs the place now. His parents had it before him. Old school uh, deli. Um, and he's a Beatles fanatic. So in if you go into Roy's Cold Cuts on Marion Street in East Boston, um, and you can check it out at uh, RoysColdCuts.net is his website. Uh, Roy has a huge Beatle collection. He's always playing cool rock music in there. The place is painted hot pink inside. Jeez. He's got all kinds of old school candies. Um, and the subs and the sandwiches, his menu, he's got everything. You will not find something you don't like. Plus, you can buy your cold cuts there. You can get these delicious... That he makes... I've seen him making these these peppers. Everything's done by hand. He, he has his own method for infusing the oil. It's unbelievable. Huh. Roy's the best. And so, you didn't bring me anything. No, because I don't like you. And if I don't like you, Roy doesn't like it. So Roy you should, loves you should never show your face in Roy's Cold Cuts. But I want to give Roy a shout-out. They're on Facebook, too. He always posts cool pictures. You can order party uh, platters and stuff and, and holiday stuff. And if you want the peppers coming for the holiday, you better get on the list here. Roy, I'm going to take some of these peppers because I no, know you you're not getting me. any peppers. That's you're right. not getting any peppers. Please. Here, Roy. Well, listen, we, we can keep this ball rolling here because we have our guy yeah. from pugilismco.com. Oh, right. We're talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Sean Reed. Reed, you there? Gentlemen, gentlemen, how are we? How are we? Ah, oh, fantastic, brother. Welcome back to the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. Thanks for having me. Enjoy my first time. Hope this is the second of many, many more. Yes, sir. Listen, let's just jump right into it because I, I got a bone to pick with you, Reed, and I know the Boston bad boy told me I better watch what <laughs> I have to say here, but I, I got a bone to pick with you because the last time we had you on, you you know broke down the Floyd mayweather Conor McGregor fight, and you promised us that the Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G fight would be the fight that everyone needs to watch. That's going to be the real fight. So how the heck did this thing end in a draw? What happened? Well, 
I can never, nor can anyone who's a boxing fan ever promise you there won't be controversy, which we obviously got. I would, I mean, I'll have to ask your opinion, but thus far I haven't heard anyone criticize the quality of the fight in terms of its entertainment value. No, that was, that was a very good fight. That wasn't just a good right. fight. It was a very good fight. Absolutely. You had a, you had a good back-and-forth fight to uh, excellent champions in their prime. Uh, both will. Canelo started stronger. I thought his speed was, was definitely a big factor. His counter-punching. But the thing with Canelo, he's always had suspect cardio. Some guys, it doesn't matter. They lift. How good or bad their body looks. You can go four-pack to six-pack to eight-pack. <laughs> doesn't matter. Some guys just get tired. And that's exactly Canelo. He wasn't moving so much because he was afraid to engage Triple G. He was moving because he needed a break. Oh. And as he does, as he's known to do, he'll go to the ropes. <laughs> what's going on? Reed, Reed, what's going on? Are you in a hot air balloon, my friend? What's going on? <laughs> wow. Look at that. He hung up on us. He did. We're going to get him back on the line. You know what? He doesn't like to talk to you. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I, wish some, I wish you would hang up on me sometimes. I no, really do. I, I, I really wish start. that you would, would hang up on me. I may have to start. Let's reconnect him, can we? Yeah, let's do it. My bad, gentlemen. I'm driving. I'll probably hit a bad sail area. My apologies. Yeah, I, are you calling from a submarine? What's going on here? <laughs> I know you're a man about the world, but... <laughs> I, I am in my Jeep. I have a white Jeep that I just bought in July. Oh, oh, a fellow Jeep yeah, man. Look at that. I am, and I'm uh, heading home from work. I'm about to go to my daughter's, my daughter's volleyball game, actually. Nice. Very nice. So, so we anyway, can't... back to your point, uh, so initially, Canelo, you had to give him probably at least two, maybe all three of the first three rounds. But then from round four, from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it was literally all Triple G. 100%. And there's no way any judge who... Just watch boxing once could score any round for Canelo in that in that stretch of rounds. But then Canelo, uh, the 10th, 11th, 12th, you know, you could give him at least two, maybe even three of those rounds. So the decision itself was controversial, but I don't necessarily – I wouldn't say it was a robbery. Oh, come I on. Now, wait. Were, you got, you got to lay it out here for the layman, because you're getting technical. You and the Duke, Duke does the same thing. You guys are nerding out on this technical stuff. For the layman, <laughs> like myself, was this was the fix in? What is going on here? You got one judge that goes dri watching another fight. Tell us what's going on here. Come on. Now, just being honest, Mr. Boston bad boy, I say Mr. out of respect. Oh, wow, look at that. That 118-110 scorecard, the only plausible explanation is corruption. Wow, wow, to, there it is. To there. the point, like, if that judge works another fight again ever on any corner of the earth, there's wow. a problem. Wow, He's that's lost. a big one. The judges have, next to maybe the, the TV crews or the trainers of the fighters, the judges have the best seats in the house. Yeah. That judge, her name is Adelaide Bird. I'm putting her on blast. Woo! She has lost her right Woo! to sit ringside. For any boxing match, not just a high-caliber, high-profile boxing match, she doesn't need to judge any boxing match again. Well, wow. because yeah. that's the only explanation for that 118-110. What she said in that scorecard is that Canelo won 10 of the 12 rounds. That's what, <laughs> that's what her score means. Now, I, listen, I, I, I'm not a boxing nerd, but even I know that that's completely absurd. Ridiculous. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, you could have been watching Tom and Jerry and got a more accurate scorecard than, than what she was putting out there. Absolutely. Stevie Wonder did not <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, now, did you see how Teddy Atlas went completely off the rails on that, too? What did you think about Teddy Atlas's reaction to it? I I love Teddy's reaction because that's, that's why this controversy continues to happen in boxing. When boxing isn't regulated, each promoter is his own private entity. He signs whatever fighters he wants to whatever terms of a contract that he wants. It's not regulated at all. And the thing about it, the promoters that are at the top level, they don't want it regulated. They don't want it regulated because they're they're, they're making money hand over fist. And usually it's the fighters getting cheated. It needs to be nationally regulated. That way you would have the best fights happening 
Now, 2017 is a year where tremendous fights are happening, but that's not always the case in boxing. And when that's not happening, it's because the promoters, they may know, hey, my guy can't beat this guy over here. So if we make this fight, then I'm losing my cash cow. That's why your good fights typically don't happen. But if you have a nationally regulated boxing star, I don't know what to call him, you know, he could be the Roger Goodell of boxing, whatever. You would get better fights and you would have fewer controversial decisions. So uh, here's my question. If, you know, like in the movie The Untouchables at the end, they're trying to get Al Capone, they switch the juries to make sure they get a fair jury. If we switch the juries, we get a rematch. Is, is a rematch worth it with these two guys? I think the rematch, it, it boils down to me as a boxing fan, as a boxing writer, to me it boils down to were you entertained by the first fight. Mm. I would personally like to see the fight again. Just being completely honest, I did have Triple G winning. Not by the margin, most people did. I, a draw was fair. There's no way Canelo won that fight, and there's no way Triple G lost that fight. So in that sense, I don't have a big problem with the draw. Wow, that's a good good call there. Uh, switching speeds here, because I know that in addition to boxing, you cover combat sports in general there. Uh, Ronda Rousey, she's currently training with WWE superstar The Brian Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> and the speculation running rampant that eventually she's going to wrestle at least one match Boy. in the WWE between so now stupid. and WrestleMania. Stupid. It might, might actually be WrestleMania. What are your thoughts on Rousey uh, dipping her toe in the pro wrestling world? Do you think that makes sense? To me, it's a natural segue. I think uh, the nature of her two losses, they were so violent and one-sided. Hmm. It's clear that a lot of people are writing her off in the sense that she was never that good. I disagree with that. But I will say there are more well-rounded women fighters than when Ronda first started. So the game is passing her by. The sport of MMA is passing her by. Well, I, so as far as it's, it's a natural segue to me, and I, I would applaud it because personally, I'm an old-school wrestling fan, Duke. I don't know about you. I don't really watch a lot of the newer like, for one thing, everybody's using their, their, their real name or a normal name. Right. Where's the fun in that? You got, like, Tom Jones fighting uh, <laughs> Chad Smith or something. Like, you know, where's, where's, the, where's the color? Where the – I hate to say it, but I, I like the, the, when they were told a racial line. When you have a black guy playing, you know, a black guy from St. Louis or whatever playing the Ugandan Giants. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Remember that, Kabbalah? Uh, boy, oh, boy. You had some Asian American guy call himself Kabuki. Yep. Yeah, you're going way back. Well, on I, I have to say, I have to say that this whole Ronda Rousey thing going into wrestling is BS for wrestling, and I'm going to tell you why. Because it makes wrestling look like the place where washed up other athletes end up when they can't hack it anymore in their sport. But it's always been that. Yeah, but here's the thing: they're trying to change that perception. You're looking at guys who are training. You're looking at guys who are becoming movie stars. The, you know, they're trying to make pro wrestling into this thing where you know it's a legitimate. Sports entertainment thing. It's a legitimate sport. And if you keep bringing in these people who are has-beens in these other violent sports to do one exhibition match that maybe they win, maybe they don't. It's like, oh, let's just... It, it knocks it down a few pegs. And it makes them look stupid. I really do. And it makes people like you, Duke, look stupid for supporting it's the idea. It's a big payday. Everybody's going to tune in to see oh, oh, I forgot. Ronda you're, Rousey yeah, no, I in, forgot. A, in a WWE you're, ring. You're a disciple of Vince McMahon. It's all, about the, am, it's all about, the Reed, about the payday. It's all about the payday. It's not about integrity. Reed, you're a fellow wrestling fan. Can you tell this knucklehead Boston bad boy he's wrong? I think you're wrong, Mr. Bad Boy. See you that? know what? See I, that? I, I might have to hang up on him. <laughs> no, I might have to hang that. up on I'm him. I'm not going to do that. He can go watch volleyball and have a great night. And I'm not talking anymore. Please. See, he knows. Knows them, right? You need star power. You need name recognition. You need star power. No, but you need you need good gimmicks. You were just saying it yourself. You don't need Ronda she Rousey. She has the best gimmicks. She's it's the baddest woman on the planet. She got her clock clean the last two oh, times she hey. went. You need baddest woman. Come you on. might be able to beat her up at this point. No, I can't beat My her My point being... Let's let's work to make wrestling better with a real gimmick, not some washed up people from other sports. How about put a little creativity, a little effort into it? That's my thing. Give me a break. Listen, Reed. Before we let you go, Bobby the Brain Heenan, as you know, the the, the greatest manager of all time and one of the greatest wrestling commentators of all time, uh, recently passed away. Uh, God rest his soul. Do, do you have any memories you can share with us of, of uh, watching Bobby the Brain Heenan? I do. Uh, can't pinpoint exactly how old I was, but I was a youth like 
uh, elementary, tail end of elementary, beginning of middle school. So at that age, most of us, every good guy we cheer for, every bad guy we hate. That's just kind of how all oh, the crowds boo this guy. Okay, I hate this guy. Well, something about Bobby the Brain Heenan during his uh, promos, and especially when he started commentating, he was so witty. He was you could you could see his brain at work. I would find myself laughing, and I'm 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 like I I shouldn't like this guy. He's a bad guy. He's a heel, as they say. But this dude is funny, man. I like this dude. So to hear that he passed away, it was you know I was kind of sad. It's just another another slice of my childhood that's no longer with us. So R.I.P. Bobby the Brain. Deep, deep. If if fans want to get in touch with you, or even want to read some of your fantastic writing, uh, what, what's the best way that they can uh, sample some of your stuff there? Like the the website specifically. Website is pugilismcompany dot com. That's pugilism p u g i l i s m c o dot com. And shout out to my boy Stuart Wallace. He's the owner of the site. He edits my articles. He pushes them out to the masses. That's how you can reach me. I'm on Facebook as well. Pugilism Company is also on Facebook. We're very easy to reach. You know, before I let you, let, we let you go, when I was a kid, my grandfather gave me a nickname, and that nickname was Palooka. And it was it was fairly recently that I realized that Palooka is a boxing term. Yes, it is. It's not a terribly favorable <laughs> <laughs> Which is accurate for the Boston oh, bad yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, You know what, though? That's right. Uh, you, you mentioned before that you, you, you love someone who is witty, who tells it like it is, a guy like Bobby the Brain Heenan. That's why Reed likes me so much, too, oh, because God. I keep this show going, unlike over. Duke, who can't get his, out of his own way because all he can think about is money like Vince McMahon. Stop it. Reed, thank you so much for being on the show tonight, man. Thank you, gentlemen. You have a good day. I'm Coop the Comedian, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Man, you talk about an action-packed show this week. We, we're just rocking and rolling here. Moving it along. You're welcome. I'm well, Once okay. again, you're here welcome. We Another Bobby Heenanism here. This guy <laughs> wants to take credit for everything. Listen, you know what? You think by saying that uh, that I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using the same material as Bobby Heenan is going to make me want to use it less or d to do something different? No, it's encouraging me because obviously the guy's a legend. So. And obviously, I'm a legend, no. so I'm going to keep doing mind. what I'm doing. In your own mind. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So what do you have Who's for us? putting you in your place? What do you have for us now? I know you, you know, got some I, good I, stuff well, there, Well, no, right? I know. You know, I, I don't have anything specific, but and I, and I had some other ideas. But today, the just the complete insanity of the people you're friends with and the things that they post on this uh, f podcast's page is just ridiculous. Oh so somebody, God. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go right, to the, right to the tape, as we say. And on Facebook, in the Duke's Wrestling Crew... A fellow named Keenan shared a post from Deadspin. Deadspin, mind you. Yeah, I love Deadspin. Shout out to Deadspin, Deadspin which is not a, a it's not a wrestling specific no, thing. So no, this they cover this, everything. This incident has made news beyond wrestling news, beyond sure. the sheets, as you kids call it. Okay, here we go. And uh, so basically, the headline is fans chant, "quote That's too far" during racist WWE promo. So, so that's the headline. Now, here's my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong. This week on Tuesday SmackDown Live, Jinder Mahal, the current champion, uh, continued what he had started the week before, which was uh, his nemesis is uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. And his new angle is that uh, he's going to make fun of the guy. And the way he's going to make fun of the guy is not his athletic prowess, it's not his uh, haircut, it's not his shoes. He's going to make fun of racial stereotypes by making fun of the way he talks because English is not Shinsuke Nakamura's first language by making fun of the way he looks presumably because he's Asian I don't know that seems to be where it's going so I want you to tell me what in the is going on here all right first and what is Vince McMahon doing because it's bad enough that Vince McMahon has made a heel out of a guy wearing a turban to tap into people's fears uh, baseless fears of, uh, you know, the, the Middle Eastern bad guy. Never mind that gender is a, a Sikh, so it has nothing to do with any, anything. 
Now we're going to make them racist, too. Never mind, the Sikhs are the most peaceful people on the planet. That's their whole deal, peace. So they're going to make this guy make fun of somebody else's race. So, Keenan shares the, the thing. And I said, because I see something like that, and I go, well, no one else is going to have a brain. I better lead, I better lead the, the pack on this oh, one. Please. I better stand up for what's right, as I normally oh, do. Oh, please. As I normally do. So I say... Make the guy in the turban the villain, then make him a racist in a turn that only the vapid McMahon clan would think clever. And then I asked you to comment, and guess what? You didn't comment. Okay, you didn't comment. But you know who did comment? You know who decided to chime in? Chime in? My one-time friend, Mr. Lavelle Porter. Your one-time friend. Who I used to think <laughs> knew what he was talking about. Oh, it. yeah. And you know what he says? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Because Ginger's whole thing is that Americans are xenophobic and yada yada. And this turns his character into a complete hypocrite, which essentially makes him a good heel. To which I said, it's total BS. It's total BS. You know why? Because why is it okay to make fun of one race and not another? And here's what I said to Lavelle Porter, who himself is a man of color. I said, okay, well, in that case, what if they wheeled a piano out there and Ginger did Mammy dressed as Al Jolson in blackface? Would that be okay? Is that okay to get heat? Because Rudy Gonzalez jumps in and says, I think... Heat's fine. I'll take the cheap heat. Cheap heat's good. That's what Rudy, Rudy, who should know better, said that. And you know what? There's such a thing as too cheap a heat. So where do, who decides where the line is? You tell me now. Because all I know is that you defend the McMahon family, and guess what? The crowd turned on them when they did this bit. First of all, apparently somebody in the crowd yelled out Mr. Miyagi when they showed a picture of Shinsuke, and the crowd booed the guy in the crowd. Then, uh, 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 Jinder and his little henchman up there, his own little private, uh, you know, uh, laugh track, he's making, he's doing the whole, oh, you know, the classic making fun of an Asian person speaking. I mean, it's one step away from him having the glasses and the buck teeth. What, what, what are we doing here? It's 2017. Isn't the world shambles enough? What is Vince McMahon doing? Because these guys are going by the script. This is something that's planned out. So now you tell me. Because it's absolutely insane, and it really pissed me off. Well, first of all, you, tell me where there's a place. You're for this. saying a lot of nonsense in here, and I. You, it's you're only nonsense for you. You're overreacting. First of all, this is pro wrestling. Oh, okay, no, pro right. wrestling, just like Reed talked about before, it's like a soap opera for everybody, not just men, but for everybody. <laughs> you don't sit there and yell at Al Pacino. When he's doing whatever depictions he's doing all over the, the, the movie right, screen is... and what have you. No, I'm going to talk now. You don't yell at him for that, okay? You don't yell at, at any other character on TV for doing what they're doing because you understand that this is in the realm of make-believe, entertainment, and, really? and more importantly, when you're talking about a heel, a okay. bad guy, mm -hmm. love it, hate it, or in between. Sometimes they got to go to places oh, that, a, that a, a good here. guy wouldn't go you know to, what? It's and cheap. they're going it's, to get it's their low, comeuppance. It's low no, hanging fruit. It's not low it's hanging low, listen, fruit. Listen, if Al Pacino he, made if Al Pacino made a movie where he dressed in blackface, just this to, happened, just to shock people. It's happened. It hasn't. Wait, Gene Wilder. Okay. Gene Wilder did it, and don't say okay. That's or, a do social, you remember no, because Silver that's a, Street? That's called social. Dan, Dan Aykroyd did it. It's in called trading so, places. It's called social comedy. So don't it's tell humor. me about that. It's humor. Oh, now it's humor. humor. But you can't do it in the WWE. Humor, You're humor is, full of crap, and no, you know because Boston the WWE. Bad boy. Okay, Jim it was whole, humorous. Jimmer's, some people no, laughed. Not. Some people laughed. Okay, and a you lot know of people boo. You know what? The next time somebody says "All Lives Matter," we'll see how much people are laughing. Then Listen, we'll see how much people are you laughing. You can't because equate your reality with with pro wrestling. You, you can't have it both ways. It's either real or it's make believe. Okay, there are no, movies they out do there. Make, it's it's that real you and make believe. There's TV shows this that is you not watch satire. where this stuff is happening. This is not satire. Okay? This is Listen, not satire. I'm going to tell you something. Okay, this is wrestling. No. This is them going for. This is like showing decapitation videos because of the shock value oh, of give it. Give me a break. There's no intrinsic value to watching right that kind no. of stuff. I'm going to tell you and something right now. This opens a this opens a scary door I'm, because kids watch this stuff. Yeah, and kids need to learn that that's a bad guy saying bad things, and this is what how happens you treat when he turns into a good guy because it's fake, isn't it? He's not really a bad guy. 
guy who doesn't have moments of redemption in life. You mean to tell me you've oh, never really? gone too okay. far in life? And okay. then what? Do you want to be labeled? How many people with that have lost the their jobs life? because there's that that, that uh, photos show up of them dressed as Native Americans with a feather and everything, or a Photoshop, or you know, people have done really racist uh, comedy bits and and they can't. They're they're pariahs. And guess what? They're pariahs. They managed to get jobs after that. Really? Okay. Tell so that you to can, Michael Richards. You can punish them for the crime. In the moment. All right. And then they give them an opportunity to redeem uh -huh. themselves later on. Yeah, but okay? you just told me that this is all make believe. So why even script it to begin with? Why this not? is not reality. This is not that, somebody. Why not? Why why script any anything in a movie? Why would you script... in a book, in a TV show? That's all it is, pal. Because when okay? you're do... presumably when you're creating that, people are doing if someone's making a gratuitous movie about violence and racism that's just that's just sort of porn for that kind of stuff. There is no point for that. That's what this has become. This is not social commentary. This isn't Bob Dylan using a, a bad word in a song because he's telling a story. This isn't, uh, you know, a, a movie about racial issues that that word is used in, let's say, for instance. And it, it's easy to use uh, black and white racial issues because that's the major thing that this country is facing right now. So we can talk about that. And the lines are very clearly drawn about what happens in this country and in society when it comes to black and white relations. We're, and we've been talking in this, in this year. How did you go from because talking about a Sikh making fun of a Japanese guy to now you're talking about black and white because relations? Because here's my thought. Why don't you no, make up your mind what because, you want to talk about I, here, Boston Because I have, I have a cadre of black folk telling me it's okay to make fun of an Asian guy. I'm and it's not you, that big of a deal. I'm going to tell you one more he, time. And if he came out, if he came out, Making fun of African American it's people. It's happened. Happens in wrestling all the time. It shouldn't happen. That, that's uh, my point. We should be <laughs> what, beyond that. What don't you understand about this? Hold on. Let me tell you something. I can't believe you're defending put this. Your, you're, put your you're big boy pants on for a second. Ill right no, now. Hold on. Put your big boy pants on for a yeah. second and understand something very important. This is sports entertainment. Yeah. It's not always what you want it to be. Okay. Sometimes it's some pretty tough storylines. That Pretty have tough. arcs. These are grown men. They have men hills and valleys. They have throwing arcs. each other around. And the, uh, so right. is every other actor, actress. So is every other performer out there. What is the you story? Don't like what it? is the story don't they're telling? It. What is the story that this they're th telling that this the ongoing storyline story of this mean, nasty champion yep. who is who going to get turban. his comeuppance? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, by the hero. Really? It's the same basic story mm -hmm. in every other wrestling storyline sure. that happens. You know, you know, okay. uh, Walt Disney makes movies about the hero coming up and defeating evil without having to go to racial overtones. They used to. I'll give. I'll oh, say oh, that. Look at that. Back in the so day, you messed yourself up no, again. No, but what look I'm saying you, Boston, is, bad we don't we don't teach kids that. We don't go and and that's not family entertainment. How do you know what the and lesson is? You just is? told me. You just told me, and we talked to our guest about it. That the WWE is looking for this squeaky clean image, no blood, no this, no that, because that's too much. Oh, but making fun of an Asian guy. Guy by by using historical stereotypes it's, it's is okay. It's an Asian guy making fun of an Asian guy. What do you want? Oh, an a oh, now it's an Asian. You're, you're out of your mind. Look. This is so stupid. So stupid. Thank you, you say a lot of stupid things. This takes the cake. No, you and Lavelle, you're out of your mind. my former friend Lavelle, no, I like and Rudy Lavelle. Gonzalez, I like and everybody Rudy. else who thinks okay. they know I like better. everybody who doesn't like you. Yeah, please. Thank you. Very few people that don't like so you. So I am the provider, you weird, strange man for joining us. Also, no shout out to, to Sean Reed, a.k.a. Reed, joining us today. Rest in peace, Bobby the Brain Heenan. As you can see, the Boston bad boy is trying to live your gimmick for the oh, rest please. of his miserable Bobby life. Bobby the Brain Heenan would you come know? in here and split your I head open so would. fast. I because think Bobby the Brain Heenan would he shake my he, hand. Yeah, please.